Hello, listeners. This week, we are starting our new game that is running concurrently with our Fallout 2D20 campaign. It uses the Elder Scrolls setting in a game called Old School Essentials. I chose Old School Essentials as it's kind of a remaster of the old Advanced Dungeons and Dragons from the late 80s and early 90s. The Elder Scrolls games were inspired by Bethesda Employees' homebrew Dungeons and Dragons game. So if you're familiar with Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, this is going to be a little different. Characters are not as powerful, and the world is more deadly. The benefit is that the rewards are greater, and some scenarios could easily reshape the world. It also allows a lot of room for custom systems, which we are slowly going to integrate as we move forward to make it even more similar to the game series themselves. Today, we will be doing our character creations and some delightful world building with our first official gameplay next week. I hope you all enjoy. And we're going to go ahead and start with uh, step one, which is roll ability scores. And so I'm going to go person by person. So not everybody goes at once so that it's all wacky do. And so what you're going to need to do is enter hashtag stat in the chat six times and then like remember those numbers or you know look back at them in the chat so we're gonna start in uh, the order in which you appear on my discord which is uh, cody you are first go ahead and roll oh, your shit. stats hashtag okay. stat if you're following along at twitter at home that's hashtag stat call us back on reply to our tweet and you may win a King's gift no, card. no, don't say. <laughs> <laughs> Raid Shadow Legends. Right. <laughs> all right, all right. Want, hashtag stat. This game is trying to kill me. Well, it's absolutely, it wants me to die. Exciting. Um, okay. Next up, we're going to start going through classes and adjusting some of those ability scores. So we're going to start back again with Cody. Uh, I've already assigned you a fighter uh, class in there, and we're we're working on an orc oh. kind of like customization. Um, fighters are a little bit boring in in general. There's a lot of like plays on those, and a lot of these character sheets are um, uh, are kind of modular in that aspect. So I'm working on a special power that you get. I think at level three, um, you're going to get kind of like a, a essentially a like a rage ability um, at level oh. three. Um, that's going to increase like a little bit of stuff, but fighters are typically pretty good because they are like legitimately good at wielding any kind of weapon, any kind of way. Um, and are just like, frankly, the damage dealers because of their, like the amount of hit points that they have out of things that they can do with their attacks. Um, so, uh, that's, are you, you're cool with that class, right? Indeed. So, yes. <clears throat> you can adjust your ability scores. Um, what you can do is you can decrease an ability score by two to add one point to another. So if you would like to do that, you can. No score may be lowered below nine, though. <laughs> Uh, all right, then I feel like my choices are very easy, and I will just stick with what I have. Sounds good. Yeah, Jeez, I can't. I literally can't. I literally, there's not a single thing I can do. Wow. Yeah, Dude. I'll just leave it. Mm. Um, Jared, you are uh, you've gone for a wood elf, which is from yeah. the uh, Carcass Crawlers issue two, which is some of the official necrotic gnome uh, kind of addendums and adding of classes. Um, you, you're down with the wood elf lifestyle, if I'm correct, right? I mean, maybe not personally, but for this character, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, you may adjust your ability scores the same way now. If you so okay. choose. Now, my particular class, what is my uh, favored attribute? Because we had talked Your about Ranger and it said strength, but I don't think I'm not sure. If we pull out Carcass Crawlers issue two here, um, we'll be able to find out what your. Uh, what elf is doing here so uh 
You need a minimum dex of nine, a minimum intelligence of nine, and your prime requisite should be in uh, dex and wisdom. Dex and wisdom. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it'll take the lower of those two for your ability, um, for your experience modifier. Gotcha. All right. Uh, Next up, we've got... uh, May. Now, May, we have discussed <laughs> playing an assassin of sorts. Yes. Um, assassins are pretty interesting in this game and have a lot of different powers. Um, are we still down with the assassination lifestyle? Yes. Okay, cool. Just call me the cleanup crew. So, assassin's prime requisite and how you determine experience is on decks. So if you if uh, you probably mm-hmm. already knew this, but you're gonna want to want a uh, a high dex. Yeah, score. yeah. That that eighteen is going into dex. 100%. That sounds great. Um, you have yeah. a lot of fun. I'm gonna, be, a- I'm gonna be squishy. I'm gonna be squishy cheesecake, guys. You have a lot of different fun uh, kind of skills that come along with this class. You're able to like disguise yourself. You're able mm-hmm. to like climb sheer surfaces. That kind of stuff. It's all all delightful and wonderful. Um, and if you want to adjust your ability modifiers, I explained how to do that. Um, mm, I literally can't. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I liter- there's literally no pluses to me doing any kind of adjustment. So I'm going to put that 18 into dex. I'm going to put the 12 into charisma and everything else is a dump stat, apparently. I like it. Literally, I mean- everything else is a dump stat for me. It's a good thing I ma- I was a little forgiving with this dungeon because a lot of the starter dungeons Ooh. can be a little unforgiving. Uh, uh, next up, <clears throat> next wow, up we've I, got Michael. It's so much yeah. trouble, guys. So uh, much Michael, trouble. Michael, we we talked about you playing a bard. Are you still down for the sing song lifestyle? I am down for my bard <laughs> concept of not a singer, but kind of like a uh, stand up philosopher. Uh, oh, okay. Okay, stand-up philosopher. So more like, uh, there was a rapper in college at, um, uh, I think it was at Penn State. Um, the, his name was Phil Osophical. Um, <laughs> oh, God. So th- that's what that kind of reminds me of. Um, so what you will need uh, for your bard is a minimum dex of nine okay. and a minimum intelligence of nine. Fair. And you're going to want a high charisma. Yes. So if you have all of that, you can be a bard. Now, if you need to adjust your ability scores, as long as they don't go below nine, you can decrease one by two to add one to another. I think that should be fair. I'm sorry, what was my minimum dex? Nine. 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 Okay. That's fine. Okay, my nine will go there. Um, So on this character sheet question, just for filling it out, there's a ten slash zero. Do I put um, how, do, how do I fill That's, this out correctly? That second um, field uh, auto update, so you'll just fill in where the the first uh, section. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Uh, let's see. It should automatically, uh, since I've already went ahead and you all selected your care sheets beforehand, you're going to have different attack at values. So let's talk about attacking while we're here. This works in reverse from Dungeons and Dragons. Um, there's a new stat. So like normally in Dungeons and Dragons, there's an AC. And so what you're trying to do is hit essentially above that AC to um, damage a monster. Here, it's the opposite. Guess what? We played Fallout 2D20 where we're looking for low rolls. Again, we're looking for low rolls this time around. So it's very confusing. We're going to be very excited about ones in general. Um, So the way it works is you have a general... uh, (laughs) <laughs> a thaco, which is an official term Jesus from Advanced Dungeons Christ. and Dragons. <laughs> um, you have a thaco, which is uh, uh, to hit armor class zero. Armor class zero is like impenetrable. So if you roll essentially, it, like if you have a thaco of 19, like that's generally pretty low. That's like a one in 20 chance of being able to hit. Um, then you calculate from my end, what the uh, creature's AC is. And all you have to do on your end is roll an attack roll. It'll tell me the result, and I get to tell you if it hits or not. So there's some math involved with that. That's all on me. Uh, So you don't really have to think about that uh, particularly. Can we we do an example? All right, so they have an AC of three, a roll of, I don't know, fucking 
that's three as well. Yeah, yeah three's so, gonna hit like everything. Okay. If you roll so, a three, right, yeah, so you're gonna one more hit. one more time. What is this Thacko thing? So my Thacko's nineteen. Yeah, so your Thacko's nineteen. So essentially, that means that anything that is so let's say if he has an AC of three, if you roll a four or under, you're gonna hit. So as you level up, your Thacko will go down. So that means that you will be more powerful um, to hit anything. Like it doesn't yeah. matter what it is. It, like at that point, like AC class for you know stuff can only go so high, and it just makes it so that everything's kind of like balanced across the board. Um, so that like if you're a level five, it's going to be, you know, you're going to be able to hit more things and penetrate more things. Now, one thing is uh, that I've learned of my one year of podcasting is I don't like it when things miss. Um, that's just a general rule for me. It's not very exciting when you fire a weapon and it misses. So the one homebrew rule I am bringing to this game is if you miss an attack, if it does not hit, you will do damage equal to what your level is. So if you are level one and you miss an attack, you will still deal one damage. So if we're you're grazing. level three. Grazing, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Because I want combat. To, the combat's already fast in this game, but I feel like missing an attack is not exciting. Like from from my perspective of like listening to a show or listening to a thing, I'm like, I want. I'm looking for that action, baby. You know what I mean? Um, and I feel like that's a good rule, and I've seen that rule in a lot of other homebrew campaigns. Um, so that's kind of the general rule for attacking that we're going through. Um, you have certain saving throws. Um, so saving throws, there's like five different kinds. Um, essentially, if you're attacked by, there's like a death ray in this game, and you have to save versus death. Uh, there's a little, uh, if you go down your character sheet, there's kind of a line of that. Um, you click on that value, and it's going to do that roll for you. Uh, I think there's death, paralysis, wands. Um, uh, breath and spells. Breath, yeah. Breath and spells, yeah. All of those are attacks that monsters can do um, or things that can happen to you um, that you can save your stuff from. Um, look at your class abilities. A lot of people have certain, like, dungeon abilities. So this game is meant to be played in a dungeon. Pretty much most of the time that we're actually playing the game, it's going to be in a very specific dungeon. There's a lot of freedom in this dungeon, but there's certain things you can do, like listening at doors or detecting hidden rooms like looking for secrets most people's like if for a regular character you're gonna have like a one in six chance some classes have a greater chance that should already be filled in on your character sheet as you level up those chances get better um there's also other different class abilities that if you have them they're already noted on your character sheets like some of them are like an assassin has like an 87 percent chance of hiding in the shadows or something like that. It's going to go ahead and roll that D100 for you and give you the results from that through roll 20. Uh, and now we're going to do another roll. So if you will go to your character sheets, we are going to roll what your hit points are. Oh, joy. Ooh. I'm so excited. <laughs> So uh, the first thing that you will hit, I believe, for your character, I think I'm going to press this right, is your HD, which is in that first like little area at the top. Go ahead and hit that button. I'm pretty sure that's what it does. Yep. I'm uh, uh, sorry, where on the character sheet is it? It's, um, so like, the, uh, it's at the very top. It's in the top uh, part above ability scores, so where it has XP next oh, plus yes. percentage. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. Three. Jesus Christ. Yep. So we're hitting HD. Yes, yes, yes it's HD. Hmm? Please. Oh, what? Jesus. No. Roll it again. You get a mole. <sighs> it's in the rules. You get a mulligan. For this one. All right. There we what? go. Okay. Oh, dude. I know I was squishy, Damn. but wow. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. Wow. The, the dice are I'm glad to you're me. having us make some extra characters. <laughs> <laughs> that is the point. 
Um, yeah. This game is not a story about your characters. Uh. It's a story about the party's legacy. So people may come in and out. People may die. Like it is a, it could be a rotating door um, based on what happens. There's some caveats for some different stuff, but generally this is a level one campaign. Now you have some things play out for you that I think will end up being okay. And generally I'm pretty forgiving um, unless I'm feeling you know particularly salty one day. So I think that you all will be all right, at least for this session. So we will see. That was pretty pitiful, but uh, I mean, let's do it again because that's two ones and a two. <laughs> let's do it one more time. Okay, that's way better. Okay, uh, one thirty. Hey, man, that's not <laughs> yeah. Okay, <I'm>... <laughs> that's very nearly the lowest possible roll. Uh, all right, so uh, oh, each person gets one hundred and thirty gold pieces. Um which you're going to use to buy equipment. So when you're on adventuring gear, um, there's a number of different, like pretty good options. Um, I'm going to be tracking encumbrance in this game. Um, everything has a weight. Um, weight is always gold. Everything is measured in gold. This game is all about gold. Um, experience is gold. What you can carry is based in gold. Um, so, uh, I would recommend a backpack, which holds up to uh, 400 coins, um, which will will cover you for most like basic things. Once we get to the, you know, if you're getting something really heavy, may not fit in your backpack or whatever. Uh, but a lot of opportunity, really lucrative game um, that we've got here. Uh, torches will be important later on. I don't know if torches will be very important in this dungeon. Th and I say that and you may have a need for a torch, but there's going to be no, um, this is not a dungeon in a typical sense. Um, but you can see a lot of the different items, uh, like, you know, if, if you want some thieves tools, if you want like, oh, I want, you know, make sure you have like rations, like having a few rations is probably good. Um, we're not going to, you know, I'm not going to be tracking like, I'm going to make sure that everybody has rations on them and deplete them as we go along, but I'm not going to be like, okay, it's been, you know, you're going to eat one ration every, like, you know, two rations a day, I guess, would be a good estimate of that. Um, uh, is there a simple difference between standard rations and iron rations? Uh, standard rations are, hang on, I have it right here. Standard rations are not preserved, whereas the iron rations are preserved. Yes. Mm. So, so like pemmican and such would be iron rations. Mm -hmm. It's hard. Lam to, you're Lam lucky to have it. <laughs> oh, I thought like uh, pr uh, like uh, primitive tinned goods, so we all get botulism. Yeah, <laughs> I was hoping they were just like iron fortified. There's some extra you know, vitamins <laughs> and minerals in there. Yes. Make you stronger and as you go. On page 96, um, there are weapons and armor. So based on your class, um, you are allowed um, certain things. Cody is allowed everything because he's a fighter. Yeah, buddy. Um, Where's the clubs? Yeah, buddy. No, just kidding. May can have any Maybe weapon, uh, but can only have leather armor, but can use shields. So you can have a shield and leather armor if you want that. For Maze character. For Michael's Bard. Uh, you can have leather or chain mail. Uh, and you can use one-handed weapons as well as missile weapons like a... Um, a bow. Uh, yeah, a bow. Exactly. Okay. Uh, yeah, you've got you can use leather armor and shields and you can use any weapon. Oh, I can use any weapon any weapon because I'm based off like a ranger or something, right? Pretty much. You're just a ranger elf combo. So I'll let you all look over that for a minute. And once you're ready, I'm going to give you like five or ten minutes to spend your 130 gold pieces. You can add them in the there should be some notes on your character sheet. You can just add them in there. Um, Anything you don't spend, you can add to your character sheet as well. And then we'll 
move on. So like if you dig into the rules of this book and like you're kind of looking at if you've looked at your character sheets, you know that it's very different from like 5e where like your character has like an immense amount of powers and by the end of it, you're a superhero. This one is meant to essentially like char high level characters will not necessarily be the strongest characters, but they'll be incredibly wealthy so that they are literally like managing their fort and an army of people and are sending them out to go do the dungeons for them while they are tackling the important things. So like, it's almost like a, th there's a bit of a management game like built into later levels where you are like, you become like the fighters guild or whatever, like you run the show um, based on how much gold you get. So Dave, I have a question. Yes. So the adventuring gear, uh, since we are tracking encumbrance closely, the adventuring gear does not have weights associated with it. Yeah, every uh, the weight is associated with it. It's in GP. Everything that costs GP, that is how much it weighs. It doubles. So like, that's that's how it's written in the rules. Is um, pretty much it coins doubles. No, it, it, do, it doesn't. The stat is means two things. So how much it's worth and how much it weighs. Okay. So however many coins it's worth, like however many of the like backpack has 400 coins. So like the torch or whatever is. Hang on. I just lost it. The torch is one like six torches is one gold. So like you okay. could have 406 torches. But that's but not I the can case only for have, Yeah, but I could only have 16 vials of holy water. Pretty much, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. But the weight of weapons and armor is different from its cost. Yeah, so um, Correct. If, you, if you are okay. wearing something, if you have it equipped, then you are fine. Guys, I don't know what else to take. I got 15 left. This is what I have so far. I have a backpack, one standard rations, one iron rations, a pole arm, a sword, plate mail, a shield, water skin, and two links of rope. And I have 15 left, and I do not know. Uh, tinder box, and flint and steel, and torches might be good, and also a water skin might be useful. I do have water skin on there. Okay, all right. Yeah, I'm I thinking I've, about I've, just taking more rations because I. It's not a bad idea. My brain is so spongy. <laughs> <laughs> so this system is designed to be a very uh, limiting and hard system, but in play is where it gets kind of wacky and I get to let you pretty much do whatever you think of. Um, it, it's very much um, in the style of how we play Fallout 2D20 where we're like trying to crash a tree into a helicopter. Like that kind of stuff is like, <laughs> yeah, if the logic, pretty much if the logic makes sense, you can do it because you're not rolling to do things unless it's hitting something. You don't roll to do things. You just roll to defy danger like so your logic for a lot of these you know wacky ideas or like oh i don't know where to put everything and it's like can i just put it in the corner and come back to it later and get it like after it's like yeah you can do that if you want it like but you don't know if you what's going to happen to that room like you wouldn't know certain things so like you can say oh i'll come back can come back for that later and then it'll you know it will be there but and so i'm not gonna less, use it so it's basically common sense roll for common sense i mean yeah y y it's more about strategic thinking for yourself and um then you can pretty much do the things there are skill checks which we'll get over once we um get past the equipment buying so just let me know when you're done buying equipment All right, uh, so once you've got that sorted, 
Mm -hmm. uh, next, you're going to name your character. Um, so I'm going to go around now. Um, hopefully you've thought of a good name for your character. Um, I've thought of several bad names. Will those work? Uh, yeah, exactly. We're going to go... You're gonna name if it's a bad name, then that's great because that just makes it even better. Um, I'm gonna start. We're gonna start with Jared actually right now because Jared has a name picked out. Jared, what is the name of your wood elf? My wood elf is named Alanis Mosswing. That's pretty good. Uh, do you have any idea about like what Alanis Mosswing is? Like any kind of like like general? I'm not looking for like you know paragraphs of paragraphs of backstory, but are we like that's good? Oh uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> One sentence. Uh, yeah. <laughs> my, it's your elevator pitch. My elevator pitch is uh, <laughs> my Morrowind self insert for the last three games. <laughs> because every time I play, I'm like, ooh, alchemy's cool. Like, oh, you can make a lot of money doing alchemy. Ooh, I like bows. It keeps me safe. And then that's just what my character is every single time I play a Morrowind game. That's great. That's great. I love it. Um, okay. Awesome. Elenus really likes making potions, using lotions, and shooting. Whoa. Shoes and Whoa. 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 I asked you not to make it personal, okay? Um, oh, is, is, <laughs> so is Elenus, Elenus is a woman, right? What, what's the, what does she look Maybe. like? Maybe. I don't, I don't know. know. What is, what does Elenus look like? Uh, like a little pill, a, like what's the yeah, like a misunderstood mid 90s rocker who somehow got radio time on pop stations and rock stations in Great. leather armor and certainly not an active man crush or anything. Yeah, I like it. I like that. I like that we we rolled the idea of Alanis Morissette, but. But boy, howdy, we really brewed that one, and that's a pun. We uh, that one. Okay. Yeah, you saw the uh, uh, the AI generated art. That's uh, <laughs> I got some good ones. I'm I'm very curious to see some of those. Um, all right, thank you. Um, got one hand in my pocket, and uh, Cody is next, uh, telling me what else is uh, going yeah. on here. How many jagged little pill jokes are we gonna make? Like, what's the? I don't know. What's the Quite a over few. under? Quite something, a few. Something I theater. Uh. Uh, I mean, the character's name is Gast Bassa. Uh, and there's really <laughs> not much. From a to name say. generator. Yeah, it absolutely. It was the mine first was too. I was like rolling one. through names and I saw Lannis. I'm like, yep. I'm stopping right no, there. This... That's the one. <laughs> I I clicked the link that you sent in the chat and gas yeah. Basso was there and I was like, oh, I, there you go. I don't need to yeah. I don't need to roll again. It's that's, done. That's serendipitous right there. It's oh. great. And there's really not much to say. I mean, he's he's an orc and he likes just kind of smashing people's heads in and he's he's not smart. He's not. He's just not smart. Is he kind of like bald guy, or has he got like some like weave or something? Like yeah, some... no, he's, he, you know how like in a lot of the games they kind of have like bald heads, except for like that the top yeah, yeah. knot thing going on. He's like that, like the undercut type deal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Well, we did gas basta basta mama jama. So shake your butt, mama. Uh, moving on, we've got I don't know what's uh, May. <laughs> If, hmm. if you thought Elder Scrolls lore was impregnable before. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay, we are not here to explain to people how this works. We're here to confuse them even more. Correct. That's, Accomplished. That's why we're That's here. why, here's the thing. That's why when you look at an Elder Scroll in the game, you become immediately blind. And that's yeah. For, yeah. for everything. Because <laughs> they don't have time to explain... <laughs> they don't have time to explain what that is. The name of the game. They're like, nope, you're blind. Sorry. Yeah. Can't look at that. Nope. Anyways. So I'm I'm going to go with uh, the name of Vel, V-E-L, Ashran. Mm, Vel Ashran. All right. Well, tell me a little bit about, about Vel Ashran. Anything, any details? I know you were looking at Dark Elf-ish Kind of Dark here. elf, uh, uh, specifically, so a Dunmer, but uh, 
like what she can sort of recall of her childhood. She was definitely an Ashlander. And she's very, very good at killing people, but she doesn't have a whole lot else going on. She's She thinks she's kind of charismatic and can talk people into doing things for her and helping her out. But I, it, it probably has a lot to do with her cleavage. So, you know, she may or may not be onto something with that. So but she is sneaky. She's very sneaky. Very, very sneaky, sir. Um, so Vel would, in 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 terms of like assassin leagues, there is a current assassin league called the Morg Tong. In in this time period that we're in, we're not actually doing like the um, Dark Brotherhood doesn't exist yet. Uh, but the Morg Tong is kind of like official assassins. They're like public facing assassins. That's just what right, they right. do. Um, right, so she is I, not. She is not one of them. She was oh, likely. Not one of them. She was likely grabbed and trained up, probably by a, a cult who uh, tried to use her essentially as a spy and less less a front facing, you know, legitimate uh, assassin and more a go in, steal stuff, get information, stabby stabby, and um, uh, at some point. Um, uh, one of her bosses figured that she was more useful as a pawn and threw her underneath the uh, the wagon wheel. So here she is. I like that. Uh, so dark elf, kind of kind of like sultry looking. Uh, uh, they have hair. This is my question. Uh, I don't know why my character. Really <laughs> like, do they have hair? Are they bald? Uh, quite quite a bit of hair with her she's she's doing i'm doing the elder scrolls online look for the uh, the dunmer specifically okay. the ashlanders they're very uh into keeping their hair she actually has a fairly uh dark sort of almost bluish black hair I like it and she's a little she's fairly proud of it actually in case it, you're it helps wondering her about in shadows in case you're wondering about Alanis, yes long straight hair down to about midriff you know mm-hmm. <laughs> she's got her jinko jeans on too she, um, she's got that uh <laughs> uh garden of eden eve look thing going on mm-hmm. yeah yeah i'm feeling so bohemian like you um so uh mike uh your bard <laughs> well, yeah. i'm very curious as to what you're gonna name i'm i'm very excited for when you were you said yeah i, I want to i want to do space bards so uh what are you what are you naming your bard his name is Spalding Greyworth, uh, which is a reference to the character who inspired him, which was the uh, monologuist and actor Spalding Gray. Um, so imagine a kind of um, very sinewy, sinewy, skinny man with uh, kind of shoulder length white hair um, who uh, seems a little effete, uh, but he likes to talk. He's very much a talker um, and he's a collector of experiences. He likes to just meet new people, go on adventures. He doesn't know where the day is going to take him. He's just there to collect stories and and in turn tell stories to those who want to listen to him. Like that, I like that. Um, so eventually, for uh, Alanis and Spalding here, um, eventually, uh, I'm going to look at the Wood Elf sheet real quick to make it double check and make sheet. Um, actually, uh, Jared, do you have an additional assignment that I'm giving you? Um, you're gonna oh, need God. to, yeah, 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 yeah. You're gonna need to select one uh, level one divine spell. Um, that is oh. that is something that you will need to do. Um, I guess so I'm gonna you... have to learn magic now. Okay, one second. Yep, yep. Uh, Mike, at your next level, excuse me, Spalding. At your next level, you will learn uh, a magic spell, but you haven't proven your worth, Mike. Um, so you you are a patron of a divine force. Um, there are some divine forces in the game. I won't get into detail about that, but imagine for me, let's let's call, me and you, let's collectively come up with what the divine force that Spalding Greyworth uh, kind of kind of is a patron of. Hmm. Is, is there a kind of a God or Holy Spirit of kind of not quite debauchery, but of like, oh, loose... oh, oh. have you met the Daedric uh, princess? Seriously. <laughs> like now we're talking. 
What kind like, of debauchery? Why That's women a better call. Yes, There's a lot of yeah, different exactly. flavors of debauchery in this universe. Exactly. You might yeah, have is it the fun debauchery? Fun debauchery is pretty obvious. Booze and sex. Booze and sex. Oh, yeah. Easy. Mm-hmm. You're going to be yeah. a patron of Sanguine, who is a mm-hmm. um, a daedric <laughs> god. Um, Good night, Sanguine, <laughs> Sanguine oversees the myriad realms of revelry, which is literally described as like an, any kind of debauchery happens in, uh, everywhere across this dude's realm. Um, so you are the, the the divine Sanguine is your patron. Um, uh, Elena, Prince, Prince of Hedonism. Yes, Prince of Hedonism. Yeah, so I'm looking at um, cleric spells. Is that what we're? Yeah, the cleric spells. Is we're what classifying as a uh, divine. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Um, I think I'm going to go with uh, purify food and water. Sure. I do have a. That's probably a good one because unintentionally I do, and for your character in our Fallout TD20 game, I do often trick you in food based things. <laughs> So yeah, yes. well, this, that is I feel like a it, trend. I feel like this is apropos for this character. Now I'm on the spell tab. Okay. Uh, ha- so I'm going to add this as a spell, but it also looks like I have spell slots available. How many times do I get to blast this puppy off a day? Is it just one spell slot right now? One spell slot right now. Yep. Okay. So I, I've I've got one spell known, and I've got one spell slot. Now, is this um? Prepare. So we're, we're getting really in the weeds here. Uh, is this prepared casting or spontaneous casting? So do I always know purify food and water, or at the beginning of the day when I pray to my nature god, I can pick a different spell? The beginning of your god, when you pray, your, so it's it's prepared, so you can pick a different spell. Got it. Each time. Yep. I got prepared it. Casting. All right. Thank you so much. No problem. Um. So you purify food and water. Uh, the other question is, what is your divine being that you uh, you can kind of have to you, you have to have a divine um, your character? Uh, no, I don't. Next, no. Uh, <laughs> so I, I need some type of uh, divine being that I follow. Um, well, Let's see. I'm going to just spout off facts and you can stop me when you come up with like, okay, this is so uh, Wood Elf is kind of on the ranger side of things. Um, The uh, the alchemy things kind of important to me. So um, medicinal slash poison slash nature gathering. Kenneth. Yeah, um, um, Kinnereth is probably good. Uh, pretty much Kinnereth is who you're going yeah. to be. And I'm going to look up what the... Because um, elves so elves call different uh, gods different things from humans because they're really special. Um, and so Kinnereth would be... I, I think elves? it's Kinnereth for the... For them, Goddess right. of the heavens, the winds, the sea, the elements, and the unseen spirits of the air. Mm. But is so that... Kine, say... Kine is the Nord version who is very much like into like nature and like hunting and sort of that traditional type of stuff. You're actually going to be uh, praying to Yafri, which is the... Um, in both the Basmiri and Kajiti Pantheon, so it's essentially just like the Great Deku Tree that controls all okay. life. Um, free uh, the singer, the storyteller, the god of song and force, the spirit of the now, and the green man. Uh, is the most important deity of the Basmiri Pantheon, also worshipped by the Altmer, Bretons, and Snow Elves. So th- this is a sort of pretty generic uh, deity. That, that fits. I mean, yeah, just I'm, like nature god. I'm not expecting yeah. to, to have some like soup. I mean, you, you could decide if you want that, but I'm not looking for like you all to have some like very strong religious beliefs. But that's pretty no, much and, who you're going to be. Yeah, drawing and I don't think power that's from. that's probably not the direction this character is going to go. But yeah, I mean, we're looking at a universe where gods and probably polytheism exist. And this is where, like, you know, 
the, the, this yes. is the Bosmeri equivalent of just God. <laughs> yes. Capital G God. Yeah. Got it. Cool. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm going to do a little lore dump uh, just to, to basically set up where you are in the history of this and what's important. And then we're going to talk about like how where we're at with this crew, what's happening. And I'm going to kind of almost turn it over to you all to kind of decide how everybody knows each other. Um, so back in time, uh, a bunch of people got together in the established, like pretty much like the faith of the land. And um, they tried to make all of the gods kind of like they almost like how the Greek, how the Christians did like stuff to Greek mythology to make it be like, oh, Zeus is like God. And this is like this. They they made this like eight divines culture. Um, and so a bunch of the humans got together one day and got this magic staff and they took it up to the highest tower in the land. And they said, hey, we don't want our God to be associated with anything elven. So we're going to rewrite history. And um, that's how it's going to be. And what that did was that broke time. Um, so time is broken. Uh, people's memories of what happened before are kind of hazy. Um, no written like history exists within this time. So this is before all the video games. You don't need to play any of the video games to understand what's going on in this. Like this is just like a generic fantasy time where things seem kind of dis like like separate. There's often writings of people will say this thing happened at this time, but there's another account of something happening completely different in the exact same place during the exact same time. So things are really confusing memory wise um what essentially you all are and and what i what i'm what i'm thinking of of how to motivate you all to engage with this game about gold um there's a few different ways that you could go like maybe you could be treasure hunters maybe you could be like thieves maybe you could be like whatever but i want you all to know each other i want you all because like you all are this party and it's the tale of of this party um the main thing and how I want to set you up and where I want to put you is you all have to start under arrest. Um, you have been brought to an inn, uh, but you were under arrest and you're being escorted to the Imperial City. So you are at a stopping point where you are under arrest. So this is classic my question Elder to you Scrolls. All is, classic Elder Scrolls. <laughs> Got it. Um, like, wh why are you under arrest? What does your party do? Like, what's some of the history between you all? And this can be open to, to whatever. You all could have done some, like, crazy shit. But I'm more focusing on, like, you all as a group. What do you all want this group to be? I mean, we could go kind of classic trope. And we're under, under arrest at the inn for getting... Uh, <laughs> Having too much fun at said in and causing a scene. Very basic of an idea. Mm -hmm. I was holding. My, al my alternative. <laughs> Alanis oh was holding. That's hers. Like she, she got a, a random pat uh -huh. down. They found skooma or something. Yeah, that's 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 pretty similar to what my alternative was. Um, I feel like it's got to be like a heist of some sort. You always it's got to be a heist. You got this fucking pop star who is, I guess, like the face or whatever. You have the assassin who's like the sneaky one. You have the bard. I guess is a distraction and then yeah. the orc that got us all caught. Hmm. Like, uh, since part of my character's background is that he just likes to meet people. Um, I like the idea that it's a heist crew and he's, he's the guy who like connected everyone. Like he knows all mm. of you from separate adventures. Oh, you're the Danny you ocean. I'm the I Danny like ocean. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. It's perfect. Yes. It's like, like, what are you doing? I'm really good at picking locks. Okay, I got a job for you. Okay, okay. I, I, this this is coming together very well. So, what <laughs> what is Alanis's role in the heist? 
Um, I would say possibly. Um, <laughs> it's hard to say, really. I'm so middling everywhere. Like probably uh, lookout or local knowledge or something. I don't know. Like probably like insider like local knowledge. knowledge. I feel like insider knowledge is good. So to be all like this heist kind of kind of idea, what did you what are you all trying to steal? Like, what's a value at this inn that you got arrested for? Fucking skooma. I like the skooma idea. We just <laughs> went just in. like a skooma den. Like literally, literally a group of people hired to steal from other criminals. Yes, I, yeah. I, I love for that. We're idea. the assholes that get caught. Yeah. <laughs> We we said a little too much at the end, and like somebody ratted on us before we could even get started. Like, no, you're not going to cut in on our turf. Like, we're just a little too big for our britches. The they guards, got the paid guards. Up. The, yeah, yes, yes, yes. So we were going to thieve from the thieves, but maybe it was a triple cross. The person who set us up uh, was going to set us up to take the fall for uh, their crew, mm. possibly even. This, this is perfect. All right, so we're a heist crew that had this plan to raid a skooma den, but then we got too drunk at the end and started talking about it. So then they, the skooma den people were like, the fuck? Bribe some guards, and then we get arrested. <laughs> it's like a well, massive are, failure to launch. <laughs> so we are, we are 100% those assholes, aren't we? Yeah. I kind of like the idea, and I like the idea that you all are the people, the criminals that are going to, like, steal from the other criminals. Like, you are the, the, the almost, like, anti-criminals in that aspect. And since you're arrested for, like, attempt at robbery, that's going to be, like, a fine of 25 gold, and you're like, I guess we'll just have to pay this, so they'll just have to cart us to wherever we need to go. <laughs> like, we're almost, like, doing the arrest. We're not going to go to jail. We're just going to pay the money, or we're going to get like out of here. It's like getting pulled over in Virginia. Like, right. you got to go <laughs> straight to the... <laughs> that was definitely a speed trap, guys. We definitely ran into that speed trap. <laughs> By the way, I love the idea that it's not that we were talking or bragging about that we were going to steal this money. It's the fact that somebody started saying something that we were kind of afraid was going to give it away, and we were drunk enough that we loudly started telling each other to stop talking about the heist, yeah. and that's what actually... <laughs> Actually gave it away. <laughs> stop talk. Stop talking about the robbery, guys. Shh, shh, shh. We need to keep it a secret from them. And meanwhile, they're sat, sat right there, like, "Are you, are you kidding?" So that's what I'm thinking. Is um, <clears throat> skooma? Not even once, kids. <laughs> right. Um. So I'm gonna go person by person, and you're gonna tell me one thing that the group has done in the past as this like anti heist crew outside of this skooma deal, which is the current situation that you're in. Um, so I'm gonna start with uh, Cody again. Tell me one, and it doesn't have to be like a long story. It can just be like we tried to do this, this happened, and that's what went down. Um. Yeah. Uh. Try tried to steal a prized racehorse, but Gasbasa just ended up eating it. <laughs> he, was, he was hungry. And he oh, ate no. the racehorse. No. Oh. It's like, wow, he good. really did eat the ass end out of a horse. <laughs> I thought that was just a turn of phrase. He literally <laughs> ate the ass end out of that horse. Gasbasa hungry. That's pretty good. Um, I, I, I enjoy I enjoy the callbacks when that happens. Be like, all right now, man, come on now, don't don't do it like the horse last time. Remember the horse? Right, he got three rations with his gold. He didn't know what else to get. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking got to keep him fed. And there's going to start the... eating horses. Uh, Jared, what's something that this crew has done? Oh, um, let me think. Uh. Be, being the sort of naturalist, maybe one of our original heists to try to find uh, uh, illegal substances. Maybe we tried to find some type of grow farm or something someplace. <laughs> tried to find like the, the marijuana field on the state property. You know, oh, is that the one, the one we accidentally set on fire and then forgot? We lost like two days 
after that. It was that. very peaceful in that entire region for several days. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the time we accidentally hotboxed a county. This is this is perfect. <laughs> we, we must have no successful heights. No today. wonder you wanted to eat a horse. I think we all probably wanted to eat the horse afterward. <laughs> Yeah, that's 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 perfect. Let me tell you, this this creation has is going way better. I am I am like very, I'm a proponent of this method. Uh, so uh, May, you are you are next to add something to the the uh, rap sheet. All right, uh, I'm. We were. Uh, I'm going to say we were hired to uh, lift some, gently lift some information from a uh, office of a uh, a middling bureaucrat. Uh, and we tried to set up a honey trap, uh, hoping that either Alanis or um, Vel would be uh, his type. And it turned out he uh, angled for a three-way with Gast and Spalding, and they absolutely <laughs> dropped the ball, literally. <laughs> Spalding would have been on board for that, so yeah. Oh yeah, but it wasn't just involving Spalding. Gast wasn't quite getting the telegraphing of what was necessary. At least, l let's just say more than once there's been misadventure through eating the wrong things. Oh, God. Oh, you God. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> Mike. All right, I've got one. So far, we've okay. got eating horses, getting high, and uh, some... Some other kinds of eating. So, all right. Damn. So this is one that what does mean good eat tell. salad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what? No, he literally heights? cleaned out his entire pantry, and he was not having it. He kicked him out. There's well, only so many uses for mayonnaise. I'm already going to have to put the explicit disclaimer on this now. We've already gone. <laughs> we've gone too far. This is meant for children. This is for the two-year-old. This is for children. All right, Mike. So, so this is a. It was good intel. We were hired by a village that was afraid that a neighboring village was about to attack. We were hired by this village to steal all the weapons from <gasps> the village they thought was about to attack, and we successfully stole all the weapons. Yay, but that just success. meant the first village came and wiped out the second village because they had no more <laughs> weapons. So we inadvertently allowed entire village to get slaughtered. Thinking and it's our that most, we are protecting. Technically, uh, technically, technically, our most it was successful, successful heist. Heist. It was a successful heist. Yeah, we did get paid heist. for that one at least. This is the most successful heist. That's perfect. Um, that I'm already, one that I'm already a huge fan. Slaughter. I'm already a huge fan of this group. Um, I'm okay. sad that you all only have three to four hit points. Um, <laughs> this is, uh, we I'm do, a real we big do need fan. To we do need to decide what this group's going to be called, though. That's sure, going to yeah. be a hard one. Well, mm -hmm. decide. Let's do it. Um, the Oblivious Fuck-Ups. That's all I got right now. I'm going to say the, the Messy Bath. Ooh. Messy. <laughs> Oh, like spelled Massey like that that uh, soccer guy, right? Massey, I mean, S -S -I. <laughs> like that. I like the the Bossa Boys. Bossa Boys, <laughs> of course you like. That's what Bossa. That's what Gas Bossa calls this. I also okay. kind of like, like that you all would have. have like, we all have different names for the group. Yes. I'm, I'm going to go with scuba divers, divers for me personally. Scuba, yes, scuba we, divers. We all have, I love it. We all just have different names. And whenever, <laughs> depending on who gets asked first, what they get, what we get called, we all answer differently. <laughs> I also like the idea that we forget that that's what the other one uh, we oh have yeah wait names. That's so someone right? will refer to oh, right. refer to a group and we'll be like who are those guys I've never heard of them before and they're like that's us scuba divers that's our names it's like scuba that's divers not our name they like scuba and they take dives in fights yeah right that wait is that us that was us shit <laughs> now, I don't know how that helps guys. you you know market us but. <laughs> 
I think we're actively working against him marketing us at this point. <laughs> <laughs> we might have I, to change our names that frequently because we don't want to be associated <laughs> with the stuff that we've <laughs> jacked up previously. Oh, well, we can't be called scuba, di- scuba divers anymore. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah well, we were never called scuba divers. Well, we did technically, we were trying to get scuba and we did kind of accidentally take a dive. So, yeah, we should, yeah, probably oh, go for God, something this different. Is, this is good. This is so we good. To change, we have to change names every mission because of we've got the, these. We've got these these painted that leather was a jackets. good name. It was a good name. I'll give you credit. But then we went and did a a, a regicide at the, the town over there. We got these painted leather jackets and there's just like a bunch of names that have been crossed out. Crossed out. The new one's been painted on below it. 